to this getting started video for CST Studio Suite. During the next few minutes we would like to show you how to get started quickly and explain some basic features, especially the new ribbon based graphical user interface. When starting CST Studio Suite the application begins with the default view active. You can return to this view at any time by selecting the file ribbon. On the left pane you have direct access to typical file related options. The new and recent section contains options for starting projects or quickly loading recent ones. A new project can be created by clicking on the create project button in the new and recent page. This starts the configuration wizard in order to help you to choose the appropriate module as well as the main project settings and result recorders for the particular application. As a demonstration of a simple workflow in CST Studio Suite we are going to be modeling a simple monopole antenna. Therefore we first select microwave and RF, then antennas and then wire. The configuration wizard shows the recommended solver for this type of application, although other solvers can be selected too simply by choosing them from the list. Please note that depending on your license some solvers may not be available. The next page lets you set the units of measurements. These will then be the default when starting the configuration wizard again. Once you have defined the project settings, you can verify your choices in the summary page and change the name of the project template if needed. Finally press the finish button to start the appropriate module, which in our case is CST Microwave Studio. Let's now take a closer look at the new ribbon based user interface of CST Studio Suite. The ribbon command bar organizes all the user interface controls in a series of tabs. All of the commands in one ribbon tab comprise a group representing one step in the simulation workflow. The ribbon is designed so that the most frequently used functions are displayed prominently and each function is shown only during the relevant step of the design process. The following core ribbon tabs are always displayed. The home ribbon lets you access some of the core settings that you have defined in your configuration. Here you can change the solver, unit settings or problem type. When opening an existing model the most frequently used operations are also available here. The modeling tab displays all commands used to model the structure, such as the import options and tools for creating primitives. In the simulation ribbon you can set the frequency range, the boundary condition and the various possible excitations such as discrete ports and waveguide ports. This is also where field monitors are defined and the solver is started. Once the simulation has been run, the primary results can be processed by using template based post processing. This and special functions such as the cylinder scan are collected in the post processing tab. The view ribbon gives access to all view options, such as the view modes, the cutting plane, the working plane, hide and show commands and so on. The basic mouse modes can always be accessed from the status bar. On the top right corner of the Studio Suite window you have access to the online help. By pressing this small triangle you will be able to access for example your support account. Because we selected the wire antenna configuration in the configuration wizard, the units have already been set up and the T-solver has been selected. Let's go to the modeling tab and start creating the structure. Activate the brick tool by clicking on the corresponding icon. I will press the escape key to open the shape dialog box immediately. This allows the input of the numerical coordinates that define the shape. Finally we can give it a name and select which material it's made of. Press OK to finish the modeling of the ground plane. We can then create a cylinder representing the monopole in a similar way. With the model finished we can change to the simulation tab in order to enter the frequency range. The background material was set correctly by the configuration wizard. In the boundary conditions dialog we can simplify the simulation and decrease the calculation time by defining the symmetry planes that exist within the model. For the excitation of the monopole we use a discrete edge port. This port can be defined by picking the circle center and the ground face and then clicking the discrete port icon. 
we do not need to change any of the default settings. Before starting the solver we should define some field monitors. We just define one for the electric field and one far field monitor at the center frequency. After a quick look at the mesh we can start the solver. After the solver run has completed, we may have a look on the results. When we select the result folder, a contextual ribbon is opened immediately, showing the relevant commands for this plot type. In the 1D plot tab you can switch the plot mode from DB to linear, change the graph to a polar Smith chart plot, add markers and annotations and much more. After selecting a 2D 3D results, you will see the 2D 3D plot ribbon. Here you can easily switch on the 3D fields on 2D plane option, clamp the range of the color bar and start the animation of the fields. The far field plot tab, which appears when a far field result is selected, offers easy access to options for the most commonly used far field plot tasks, such as setting up an array or changing from a 3D plot to a 1D polar plot. After switching, the tab also allows you to adjust the properties of the 1D plot for example its angular settings. Use the file ribbon to change to the default view of CST Studio Suite. For changing to the next project there are several options. Whenever you want to create a new project for the same type of application you can just click on the previously defined configuration. You do not have to go through the wizard again. If you are interested in different application area a new template can be created by launching the configuration wizard again. Alternatively, an existing project can be opened via file and then open or if you have used it recently by selecting it from the list of recent projects. The ribbon guides you through the modeling and simulation process. We are convinced that this concept helps make the process of getting the results you need quicker and easier.